Hi, welcome to the screencast for the Topic 9 quiz. Number 1 asks, the oxidation number of chromium is the same in all the following compounds, except, so looking at this, we know that OH has a minus 1 charge. Um, you could pull that off your common ion chart. Otherwise, you know that oxygen's a plus 2 or a minus 2, hydrogen's a plus 1. So overall, hydroxide have a minus 1. There's three of them, so that's a minus 3 charge. You only have one chromium. So chromium is going to have to be a plus 3. The second one, I've got 3 oxygen at a minus 2 each for minus 6. Since I only have 2 chromium, and they have to equal a plus 6 charge, my chromium, again, will be a plus 3. SO4, I know, has a minus 2 charge. Again, looking at a common ion chart with 3 of them. Again, that's minus 6. So 2 chromium would have to be a plus 3 each. The last one, you got two oxygen, or minus two on three different oxygen. Just try that again. So three oxygen at minus two each for a total of minus six. So one chromium is going to have to be a plus six. So D is where my number changes. Number two asks the following, it says the following reactions are spontaneous as written. And so which of the following pairs will react spontaneously? So as you look at this, you need to set up a reactivity series based on the information given. And fortunately, they put them right in order for you. The first one you see that Fe must be more reactive than Cd because it's able to push its electrons on it. And then cadmium is able to react with tin ions, so cadmium is more reactive than tin. And tin is able to react with lead ions, so tin is more reactive than lead. So then looking at the pairs, number one, tin uh, um, metal cannot take ions from iron because iron is more reactive, so one is not an option. Cadmium can give electrons to lead, so that will occur. And iron can give electrons to lead, so that will occur. So D would be my correct choice. Number three wants to know what happens at the positive electrode in a voltaic cell and an electrolytic cell. In a voltaic cell, the ions come to get electrons at the positive electrode. Ions, positive ions, come for electrons. That means it's being reduced. So either B or C is my correct answer. And then at the electrolytic cell, the positive end of the battery is attached to the positive electrode. So that's going to attract your negative ion. And your negative ion then is going to lose its electrons, which is known as oxidation. So that means that B would be my correct choice here, reduction and oxidation. Number four, the oxidation numbers of the elements in sulfuric acid. Well, hydrogen and oxygen are going to be plus 1 and minus 2 um, because they have priority. It's sulfur that you have to determine. So C and D are off the list right away. And then if you look, you've got a positive 2 from the hydrogen, a minus 8 from the oxygen. That leaves a plus 6 for the sulfur to account for. Scrolling down then, a voltaic cell is made from copper and zinc half cells. The equation for the reaction occurring is such. So when you look at this, you should be able to see that zinc metal is becoming zinc ion. That means zinc metal is giving up electrons and copper metal is gaining them. So which of these are true? Electrons are lost from zinc atoms. The mass of the copper electrode decreases. No, that's not true because copper solid is actually a product, so that should be increasing. Electrons flow from the copper half cell to the zinc half cell. That's not true either because copper is the one gaining electrons and zinc's the one losing the electrons. And negative ions flow through the salt bridge from the zinc half cell to the copper half cell. This one you might have to think about a little bit, but it's the electrons leaving the zinc, so the negative ions are going to flow to the zinc. So it's going to be just the opposite. It's going to flow from the copper to the zinc since the electrons are leaving that area. So um, B, C, and D are not going to be true statements. Only A is a true statement for this voltaic cell. 
Number six wants to know what happens when molten sodium, sodium chloride is electrolyzed in an electrolytic cell. So I've just made a little sketch here that the negative electrode is going to be attracting the sodium ions, which will then become sodium metal, which means they're picking up an electron, whereas the chlorine ions will become chlorine gas in the, my wrinkle here. So it's going to become chlorine gas, and they're going to give up the electrons. So based on that, chlorine is produced at the positive electrode. That'd be true. Sodium ions lose electrons. That's not true. They're going to gain electrons. Electrons flow through the liquid from the negative electrode to the positive electrode. That's not true either. They're actually going to be flowing through the liquid. Um, they're going to be flowing through the wire on the external circuit. And it's going to be the ions flowing in the liquid. And then D, oxidation occurs at the negative electrode. No, that's reduction going on as sodium is reduced to a positive metal. Number seven, the following information is given about reactions involving X, Y, and Z. And so in the first one, you see that X is not able to bump Y off. So that means Y must be more reactive than X. And then you see that Z is able to pump Y off. So Z must be more reactive than Y. So looking at this, A would be my correct choice. Number eight says electrolysis can be used to obtain chlorine from molten sodium chloride. Write an equation for the reaction occurring at each electrode. So Molten sodium chloride, you should realize, is going to give you Na plus and Cl minus ions. So Na plus is going to pick up an electron to become Na solid. It's going to be attracted to the negative electrode. And that's going to be the cathode since reduction is going to be taking place there. Chlorine, on the other hand, Cl minus is going to give up its electron to form chlorine gas. And since chlorine gas is diatomic, I need two chlorine ions to give up two electrons. That's going to be attracted to the positive electrode. And that's the oxidation. So that would take place at the anode. And then it wants you to describe two different ways in which electricity <coughs> excuse me, is conducted when the cell is in operation. One is through the wire. It goes externally through the wire. Your power source is pushing it through the wire. And the second is the ions in the electrolyte or in the solution. Number nine, um, if you think too hard about this one, it gets difficult. And if you don't think too hard about it, it's much easier. It says write an ionic half equation to show the conversion of ascorbic acid to dihydroascorbic acid. <coughs> and dehydro, I should say. And dehydro just means it's lost the hydrogen. And if you look, that's exactly what's happened here. You have C6H8O6, and it becomes C6H6O6. So if you look at that, what's happened is it's an acid. So two of those hydrogen have fallen off because I have two less over here. So if you write what you know to begin with, you really don't need to do anything with oxidation numbers. Because if you do something with oxidation numbers, you end up with a two-thirds here and a plus one here. And it's like, mm, how do I get a third of an electron? Well, you don't have to worry about that because just looking at the 2H plus here, you know that that needs two electrons to balance the more positive side of your equation. And then the hydrocarbon, actually it's a carbohydrate because it's got oxygen as well. The two carbohydrates are electrically balanced within themselves. So it doesn't matter that carbon's oxidation number changed. And then the Fe3 plus, they tell you becomes Fe2 plus. So you have to realize that that would only involve one electron. So this is going to have to be doubled to 2, 2, and 2. And so when I combine it, my equation should be C6H8O6 plus 2Fe3 plus will yield C6H6O6 plus 2H plus plus 2Fe2 plus. 
Number 10 wants to know which are examples of reduction. So if you take a look at Fe3 plus becomes Fe2 plus, that is reduction because the charge goes down. Cl minus becomes Cl2, that means it goes from minus one to zero, so that is not a reduction. And then the CRO3, you have to take a look at, you've got three times minus two is a minus six, so CR is a plus six to CR plus three. That would also be a reduction. So B1 and three would be the correct choice. Number 11, which statement is correct about an oxidizing agent? So an oxidizing agent means it's reduced or it gains electrons. So A, it reacts with oxygen, doesn't have to. B, it reacts with H plus ions. Again, it doesn't have to. Either of those might be true. It loses electrons. No, then it would be oxidized. So D is the only true statement here. It undergoes reduction. And number 12, one more about molten sodium chloride. Which process occurs during the electrolysis of molten sodium chloride? Sodium chloride ions move through the electrolyte. That's true. The ions are moving one to the positive electrode and one to the negative. Electrons move through the external circuit. That's also true. And oxidation takes place at the anode. That's true because an anode is any oxidation. So D, all three of these would be true statements.